What's going on, PB family? Welcome back to another awesome episode from the Digging Deeper podcast with special guest Paul Jarvis. 
What's going on, Paul? Co-host, Mr. Errol Bremer in the building. How you guys doing this evening? Good. Good. How about you guys? I'm doing well, thank you. Knock this thing out of the park. How, how's everybody doing this evening? I haven't seen uh, quite, haven't heard from quite a few of these folks here. Let's give a quick shout out to some of these folks that are watching this evening. Who do we got in the building so far? All right, we'll start from the top. Mr. Jeff King, what's going on, brother? Matthew what's up, brother? Russell, Mojo Lucas, Mr. Gold Mojo. Monkey Prospecting. Shout out to you, brother man. Who else we got in here? Mama Tina Williams in the building, Stephen Bertrand. Uh, let's see who else we got in the building. Mr. Paul Scheiber, I.B. Neal, Frank Higgins, Alan Barnett, Fred Messimer, Steve Thoroughgood. Hell yeah. And the hits keep, keep on hitting on the YouTube side on? of things. We got, who do we got in the building? Ooh, I don't want to butcher that. So I'm just going to say, hi, what's going on, David? <laughs> David and Christensen oh, cool. Prospecting. Good deal. You, you got to give it a try. I don't know what it is. I'll I can't see you too, but you got to oh. say it. Uh, ooh, uh, David Alphonse uh, Tiart. I tried. And if I butchered that, I greatly apologize. Uh, it's good to have you here this Alphonse evening. Alphonse Tiart. All right. Well, it sounds good. It rolled off the tongue. We'll so find out. <laughs> hopefully, I pronounce that right. <laughs> but it's good to be back in the building, everybody. Um, we took a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, you know, family things get in the way. And, uh, we just had a lot of stuff going on. Winter time is kind of you hunker down and not really want to do anything, at least on my side of the woods. Um, so it's good to be back. This is the first official kickoff podcast of 2024. Um, it's going to be a ton of fun. We got Mr. Paul Jarvis as one of our first guests for the official re-kickoff of the, the Digging Deeper podcast. So um, let's go ahead and start off first and foremost. Paul, how are you doing these days? I am doing terrific, thank you. I've been busy, 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 and it's that time of year where everything just always seems to play out. So, uh, just having a good time, man. Having a good time. That's good. I see a bunch of merch behind you, man. That's pretty exciting stuff right there. So, before we get in, I was going to say, before we get into all the juicy details here, um, first and foremost, uh, the what made you want to officially jump over to getting that website rocking and rolling was that one of those things that's kind of been in the works the last couple of years or even longer than that and a super uh, long story man yeah i was gonna say let's kind of let's start from the beginning and go from there i'd love for the folks watching to kind of dig in and and uh hear all about it um because i'm just just one guy um, there's only so much I've ever been able to do, and my focus has always really been in the shop, manufacturing, coming up with different ways to build things, different procedures to do things, and it has allowed me enough time to do a lot of business side, website being one, marketing, uh, things like that. That's a lot so of work. I've just Oh man, it's it's a tough. Anybody that owns a business um, will not tell you it's easy. Right, right. right. There are no easy business. It's a uh, it's a lot of work, and uh, because it's just myself, I'm spread across accounting all the way to manufacturing. <laughs> to a to Z, man. Like I'm the guy busting the. T Where's my tape? <laughs> you know, I'm the guy that busts the tape, puts the shipping label on. Um, oh, yeah. And the reason your shipping is delayed, uh, but it's packaged <laughs> with care, so that's got to mean something. Right? <laughs> that's got to mean um, something along just, the way. It's it's literally just been myself uh, for most of the part doing the work, and uh, I've relied on other people to help me with sales to help grow my business. And unfortunately, when you're doing that, uh, you're extending a lot of. Uh, trust with people and oh yeah big time you know money business the whole nine yards so it just didn't it hasn't worked out well i've been looking for people to work with and it just hasn't it hasn't meshed in a way that's been um good for adventures and goal prospecting um so we kind of just got or i got kind of just 
what am I going to do? What's my move forward? I had a really poor Wix website that my niece made for me when I first started. Dear, <laughs> great job. Um, but yeah. it didn't have a click and pay type idea. And everybody is on this world of instant. So unfortunately, I had to move out of the Stone Age, which I love the Stone Age. <laughs> I, I like manual labor. I do. Um, so it just, it had to happen, man. And I looked at a bunch of different ways to get a website. And like I say, it's a long story. And I just, nothing worked out. A bunch of people told me they would do it. And then they never felt, never came through. Um, I priced out some and they were just a little bit out of my budget. Although I know there's professionals that do this and they're great at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But everything I've done at, at my company has been done by myself. And it just, hit that roadblock and I was like, we, we have to do this. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot. It's definitely a lot. Um, you know, when I, when I was first starting to try to figure out a website for the PB family, um, you know, I am definitely <clears throat> very good with technology and software and hardware and, and whatnot. So I kind of knew that it was going to be one hell of a hurdle. Um, so I feel it, man, trying to figure out, you know, logo design and you're talking about pa different pages and interactions between the pages and, and different way things are presented, right? It's, it's, it's a lot to handle, especially for one guy, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're starting from the very beginning with this idea that you have and, and what you want to bring to the community. Um, and as you go along, you realize the more successful you get at it, the harder it becomes, Absolutely. you know, and, and, you know, you, you do everything in your power to keep that train rolling, right. That coal being thrown in to keep that engine roaring just as hot as it can. But there is a point you get to where you're hundred percent, right. That roadblock, boom. Okay. You step back, you, you figure out your options and then you say, you know what, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. And you just keep rolling with it, you know, and I, I have a motto and I've always said, you know, if it's not difficult, it's probably not worth doing. Uh, it's supposed to be a challenge. Yeah. Uh, challenges create great learning opportunities. So it website for one was I had some great external help. I have a couple amazing friends that stepped up to the plate and really were able to help me. But just if you don't keep putting roadblocks in front of yourself, challenges to keep going after, it's what do you like you're going to become complacent, right? It's going to become well, too easy. Well, and, and that's 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 the reality of it, you know. <laughs> that's the reality of it at the end of the day is, you know, you become complacent and you just you don't necessarily level up like you should be. You just become comfortable with what you've done. Right. And that's where businesses stale out. You know, they never grow, they never expand. And and part of growth and expansion is stepping out to the unknown and continuing to step out in the unknown, trying to do everything you can in your power, whether it's website, whether it's new build ideas, whether it's promotion, whether it's and and the fact that it's one guy, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to do all of it, dude, I salute you on that. And I mean, from my standpoint, look at where you're at now compared to where you were at two, three years ago, four years ago, you know what I mean? Bringing an idea to the forefront and seeing it take off in the way that it has for you is extremely exciting. But as you said, you got to keep pushing. You have to keep, you know, it's it's an ever evolving community. And, you know, the, the gold prospecting community, what it is now, wasn't what it was just 10 years ago. No, it, it, it has changed a lot. There's there's yeah. definitely a much broader market than there was uh, 10 years 100%. ago. 100%. Um, and, and the good thing is, is that the market that has broadened is, for the most part, a pretty good market. It's not like we've gotten saturated with a ton of crap. Yeah. So that, that part's kind of nice. It's been some really good manufacturers step up with some really interesting products and yeah. with quality in mind, um, which is the whole reason I started manufacturing was because I didn't feel at the time that there was anybody that was even remotely like, I, I'm not going to put anybody down, but like the biggest name people were still disappointing in, in my yeah. eyes yeah. 10 yeah. years yeah. ago. And uh, by coming out and being uh, 
strong with the commitment of quality and good gear, the whole field has come up. Like everybody's yeah, yeah. doing better. All the gear out there is better manufactured than it was 10 years ago. Oh, I agree. So, you know, it's, that is, it's, everybody it's, needs that. So yeah, it's, it's more of a, a personalized uh, situation when you purchase a piece of gear from reputable people versus 10 years ago. 10 years ago, they were slapping things together. And I'm not going to say specifically 10 years ago, uh, just, but <clears throat> it's available, man. What works, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we got some comments here. I'd love to go through real quick. Sure. Um, we got quite a bit of folks on, we got 41 people watching right now and we're not even a half hour into the show. So that's pretty amazing, especially for, uh, coming back from, uh, being a little, little on the low end with podcasts for quite some time. Awesome. So that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. So let's go through some comments real quick. Um, so we're going to start a little bit further back up here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say any of Don's comments. Zero. Don, you're, you're burnt. <laughs> Don says, Winter, Jaron doesn't get out and dig enough. Instead, he makes more kids. Yes. Uh, for those that don't know, I have twins on the way. Woohoo! Awesome stuff. Uh, let's see. We got Keith <clears throat> Keith Roop in the building. What's going on, Keith? Good to see you. Casey Lawson in the building. Good to see you, Casey. Norm up, Chang. Casey? Kimmy Garcia. What's up, Kimmy? How you doing? Uh, Cliff Summers in the building. What's going on, Mr. Cliff? Uh, Matthew Rudisell says, hope we can do an event in Indiana or Ohio this year. We do have something coming up in the works. We can't say just yet. We're kind of working on the East Coast. Um, our main man in charge is Mr. Rob McGuire. Um, he has a lot of stuff going on in his neck of the woods um, as far as medically goes. Um, you know, he has certain procedures that he has to get done. And so for the 2024 season, he is going to take it uh nice and slow you know once all the procedures are done things things like that he has a lot of healing to do so um <clears throat> uh if if we do have someone back east that would like to sponsor something like that and th as far as that goes reach out to one of us um let's see alan barnett trusting people with your baby is tough yeah that was what we were just what uh me and paul was just talking about yeah that's a huge thing um it you is. know when you when you create something that you put so much love joy and attention into it's extremely hard to let anybody else in completely. You know, it's it's one of those things where you kind of just, I mean, for me personally with PB, when we first, when I first started it, it was terrifying. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I didn't know who I could trust, who I couldn't trust to help me out with page and group digs and this, that, and the other. And uh, it was tough, but you make that initial jump and <clears throat> you hurt a lot of feelings that's what's gonna yeah. happen you're gonna hurt some feelings yeah. but that's gonna yeah. happen those are growing pains and what you're gonna yeah. find is is the people that are solid will always be right there yep and yep yep that's and that's the funny thing I, that's the funny thing is i've trusted my gut with all the mods that we have i don't even like calling them moderators they're like my family you know like going out on that dig with arrow and rob and talking with mama tina how she takes care of everybody in in on the facebook page and don don he's just an amazing man you know just awesome stuff anyways i can go on and on about that <clears throat> uh let's see here uh norm ching went dredging yesterday and the day before here in california before today's storm that's good good deal man get it in uh, let's see. Put a jar of uh, in your dredge. Yeah, we're going to definitely talk about all that in a little bit, for sure. Right. Gonna want this. It's, it's lime it's green. Like, How can you refuse? Wow. Uh, well, anybody can powder coat any color, so don't ever let the color separate Ooh, yeah. you from the design. Right. <laughs> Not the color. You could have a purple. You could have a pink. What do you want? Do it yep, all. Yep. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I just did Man, you would be people love purple. Yeah, I I do too. Yeah, purple is a cool color. Purple, purple is a really cool color. Powder coat that that high gloss purple powder coat that people love of mine is almost three times the cost of regular powder coat, and people will pay that because they love purple that much. And no, to awesome. those people, I salute you. <laughs> i salute you i love it all right we got a few more comments and then we're gonna rock and roll um let's see here i think uh, uh Mojo lucas has got an announcement he says he's uh hosting two disabled veterans to kick off 
our outdoor therapeutic recreation program on Memorial Day weekend. Super excited to get this going with the concept of the awesome world of prospecting. More detailed information coming soon. Look me up if you're interested in participating or volunteering for the growing project. Appreciate it. That's Mojo Lucas. So if you're looking to help out in Clear Creek or uh, Clear Creek County, uh, Colorado, reach out. Or if you're looking to fly in and participate, reach out to Mojo Lucas. He'll get you set up. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. Good deal, Mojo. Send us that information. That way we can promote that. That would be absolutely, it'd be my honor to promote that for you. Uh, let's see. We got Alan Barnett. He says, doing good, brother. Might be an official claim owner in Northern California soon. That's badass. Always love to hear that. Always love to hear it. Uh, Sean Ingalls. I spoke, I saw a little bit. He says, hello, PB family. It's been a while since I've been on, been battling, uh, diabetes issues. Just got out of that hospital yesterday after 17 days and surgery on both my feet. Hope to be on the men soon and back in the Creek, getting my Creek on prayers are going to be sent your way um you'll be on the creek soon r- before you know it brother i promise you that um let's see here da, 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 da. um let's see all right norm ching says i seen that punch pr- pl- bleh, geez punch plate riffle <laughs> i want one hell yeah uh let's see yeah so um anyways so with that being said did we have any from youtube i try to do the facebook youtube thing uh kind of a pain in the ass get your question uh, let's see christian prospecting says this is a great question to hear answered for me considering what i'm about to start doing soon um <clears throat> miners rule miners rule says that's why i built my own stuff the big guys have disappointed me for years now yes i totally get that um believe you me i had casey uh casey lawson good brother of mine um, I had him build me my personal high banker that I still own that's in my garage. And that thing is sweet. Not only the craftsmanship that is on that thing alone just gets me excited. It's the fact that it was custom built to my liking. It's a little bit taller than your usual standards. Um, you know, and I'm a taller guy. You know, I'm six, damn near 6'5", six 6'4", five, six and whatever else. So for me, I needed something a little bit taller, um, something a little bit bigger. Um, it fits the 12 by 48 mats, no problem. I mean, just snug as a bug. Um, it's just an awesome custom-made piece. And so Miner's Rule, I totally get it, man. I totally get it. You know, custom pieces, it just means that much more to you as well. So it's 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 awesome stuff. Um, it's comes from the heart, man. When it's custom built, the guy that built it generally... Not speaking yep. for everybody, but generally the ones that are building and trying to help people out, yeah. whether their uh, skill set is a five or a ten, yeah. they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. And those DIY guys need shout out, man. Like there's some there's some great Facebook pages now with guys building their own gear and stuff. And mm-hmm. some of those guys are just dialing it. It's it's awesome to see. You know, it's, it's, it's nice to see good. that. It's it's really nice to see that in the community. I mean, we've always had that um, people building their own stuff to take to the creek. But when you start seeing um, folks pop out and really put that extra love and care into it, and and it's just an amazing thing to see. You know, it, it just it, it just it helps so that. much. It, it helps means so much that. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, one more comment here from Barbara, Barbara Garcia off of YouTube. Hey guys, heavy pants for everyone. I, I'm still kicking and breathing, trying to find some time to dig again. Good to see you again, buddies. Fernando Quare, ooh, Fernando, <laughs> ah, Fernando K. Rose going back home, listening to you guys. It's good to see you, man. Good to, good to hear from you, brother. Um, yeah. So with that being said, let's get back to the subject on hand. Um, so yeah, so adventures and pro- and prospecting. So you decided to come out with the website. Um, yep. And when you did decide to come out with the website, um, as I personally know, I know it's a lot. It's a lot to get the products on there. It's a lot to get the price points on there. It's a lot. Um, about approximately how long did it take you? Did you kind of take your time to get this thing built? Or did you did you feel like, hey, I really need to get this thing going, and you spent a couple days solid on it? Uh, I don't think we're done. Um, (laughs) 
I think there's still work to do, but honestly, I think we probably put uh, two, three weeks into it. And one of the biggest parts was trying to describe the product. Like, like I've ever, you know, I, this is me. I talk and I tell people things all the time. So to put that on paper was really weird. Um, right. So, you know, thankfully it's 2024 and there's like AI chats and stuff that are amazing to help you with the, uh, <laughs> descriptions and stuff so <laughs> uh, awesome. it's not my strong suit I, I don't really care i just want it. the only thing i cared about with the website was that when you clicked on it you could be what do you want easy that's it yeah. like you want a six inch high bank you want an eight inch high bank you want a 10 inch high bank or are you looking yeah. for a custom built unit i just i wanted it really simple and i think we nailed it pretty good uh, there's yeah. still a few yeah. tweaks we're gonna do but for the most part, I'm really happy with it, and it's been moving products, that's, so that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's the, really awesome. The cool thing is, is that I don't know why my fingers wrong. <laughs> we started. Uh, it's so weird. Uh, we <laughs> it's right over making, there. We it's started right making there. some some merchandise as well, um, which is a thing I've always wanted to do, and the people that help me with the website are also helping me with the merchandise. So we're we're making some of our own logos. It's so weird. I don't know why it's reversed, but uh, we're making some of our own logos and we've got some bigger logos and we're going to do some hoodies. I got beer cozies. I even have those tall cozies. They're like slim drinks, um, which will all be coming. So that's kind of exciting. It's just an addition to add. And then I, it just ties more of the product together. I've been asked about stuff like this forever. The weirdest thing I was ever asked for, and I, I still don't do it to this day, is to sign sleeves boxes. I just, I don't know why people want that. And to me, it's weird. So you know, the signature is <laughs> on the logo. You'll um, have it by the end of the night. I promise yeah. you that. <laughs> so, so everybody gets one. Um, and then yeah. I don't feel weird about doing that. And it just, I don't know. No, that's it's, awesome. I think the clothing thing puts them closer to the person that made their high banker or, right. or made their product. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Um, it just brings you know, it around. Yeah. It, it, it brings a, it brings the community together. And it's, and it's also a really, really awesome topping, uh, a talking subject, excuse me, when you're out and about, right. you know, and, and you're wearing some gear, people are like, Hey, what's that about? Cause they're, they want to get more involved in the community. If, if, they really love gold prospecting and rock hounding and things like that. They really want to get in to the community as much as they can and really get themselves enveloped into it. So, You're you know, totally the, right there. Um, yeah. I get customers tell me all the time that they get stopped at the river. People are really interested in their equipment and it's probably some of it's to do with, you know, super bright purples or oranges like they just right. they have something that people are like that's weird why would you have something it's different like yeah it's so different people that aren't in the prospecting industry because lots of us live in in city communities and we're prospecting in rivers that, or creeks in our own yeah our backyards kind of thing so it's it's good to educate the people around us because where i live people have no idea there was a gold rush here in the 1800s like right. it's part of our history and they don't even know it um, so it's always fun to be able to kind of share that and, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you better, had, <laughs> yeah, well, and the thing is, is most prospectors are really open and willing to, um, mm -hmm. give knowledge out, you know? Absolutely. So, um, you know, on top of that, you know, them wearing one of your pieces of merchandise, they now have a person that builds quality stuff they now have a, a, an outlet that they know they can trust because they see it being used right there. Cool. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a win-win situation, not only for yourself, but um, for the folks that yeah. buy any of your products from you. Yeah. But if you bought stuff from Paul, you know, there it's, it's not just the box. It's the method. Well, I'm and the saying people that of... have it. I'm saying people that haven't, if they, yeah. if they, if they see a logo or they see the hat, you know, they're curious. They're going, well, what's that? Well, then that person that has bought can say, Hey, check this out. Look at this. You know, this is, you know, yada, yada, yada. And you, you know, know, that person cool is we, we put, we did this, we did it in house. We put the, we, we put, we transferred this. We didn't hire a company to do it for us. We did it. Yep. So 
if it falls apart in three days, you can be like, Paul sucks at making shirts. But the, the I first can year. say we did it. Like, the first we year. Found, we found yeah. these graphics. We found the way to do it. We did the heat transfer. We did it in-house. So it's just right. like, it's like all the products that you buy from me. It's handmade, right? Right. Um, there's an avenue of actual people attached yeah. to everything I do. And I always want people to remember that, that everything that we do is about skill set. And uh, yeah. the merch thing is just another avenue. I have some really talented people that I know, and it's like I'm trying to push them to also use their skill set to, you know, to grow together. The they can do stuff. And, and it's really fun to be a part of that as well. You know, like I love the prospecting side, making clothing is just another part. And it's, we're just tip of the iceberg, man. Like this is like Kim Kardashian clothing or any name brand clothing or whatever you want. Like the, the level of explosion you can do with that is insane, but we're just, oh, yeah. just touching on it. We're going to have some really sweet hoodies and try to have merchandise that is affordable that you would wear gold mining, right? If you destroyed it while mining, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, yeah. But also yeah. have something nice enough that you would wear out. So, merch well, that would be appropriate. Yeah, yeah, but it's like it's fun, right? It's just yeah. Why are we doing this? It's it's for fun. It's to enjoy. It's to give something back. If if you were into sports, you'd want to wear a Nike shirt or or whatever your favorite sports team is. Yeah. And you know what? We're in the gold mining industry. We might as well cater to our clientele and allow them to be connected to the brands that they like. And I think this is this is me doing it. Hey, hey your hey. logo is sick. I, I love and your logo, man. You're kicking it's ass. Yeah, you're, you're, you're kicking ass. Today. Oh, man. I'm going to be all... <laughs> I'm going to crack up every it's time. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Right <laughs> there. She had to change some of the coloring, but the coloring just, it turned out really well. It's much, there's much more green and stuff in it. And either way, they did. No, great. it's, yeah, it's an absolutely phenomenal yeah. job. Our hats are uh, embroidered. And that's awesome. We didn't want to do, I didn't want to do the traditional logo. So we just mixed. No, I like the hat. I'm excited for it. And just something simple in a hat that most, guys enjoy wearing yeah again if you're going prospecting right like the idea is that this gear is stuff that you'll wear out so well and that's the thing uh you know i've been trying to figure out our clothing situation um the pb family really loves the clothing that we do have and yeah, we do a ton of ton yeah. of giveaways with shirts and sweatshirts and things like that and we love to do it um yeah, I can't tell you how many burns and blisters I I have had on my hands from how many shirts and sweatshirts I've pressed. Right. I don't know how he many. He wasn't originally I... a redhead, folks. <laughs> you know what's funny is you learn, right? And that's oh, yeah. always been my business philosophy yeah. is I've always said together we learn. So the things I'm doing, if you get if you buy a t-shirt from me and the logo, the logo's crooked, <laughs> just know that I did that. <laughs> we did. It's a special edition. We did that. Special that's edition, one of one. Of one. Like, one, of that's, one. Like, uh, that's like getting a new sluice box with a scratch in it. I did that for you too. Right? So be happy. Be happy. That's a signature. Uh, right? That's funny. Mm. <laughs> that's hilarious. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, so let's let's talk about a few more topics um, that I wanted to let some of the folks know about. Um, the Jarvie Riffle. Um, I really wanted to talk about the Jarvie Riffle. Um, I've heard about it all over social media. I've talked to people in 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 person about it. Um, I've talked to folks um, that is that use it all the time. I mean, I've talked to a lot of folks about the Jarvie Riffle, and uh, I kind of wanted to get the whole idea behind it. I want to get um, you know the origination of the idea. Um, and, and what made you come up with it and, and really the proper folks... way to use it. I think when people have problems with it, it's because they don't understand the proper setup. So interesting when you say problems with it, because it's like any, any type of product that you put in any sluice box, it, it, it can go the wrong way. So there are different, uh, riffle designs that will optimize the, the situation you're in not all boxes 
are equal if we're talking high bankers if we're talking dredge boxes um so basically the idea if david peterson and myself worked on it uh, he provided me a napkin sketch and i basically made about a 10 million prototypes <laughs> of, of that and so i got ideas in different ways that i like the way that it worked and it's a standard in all of the boxes i build um, whether it's a small riffle or a large riffle, there will always be one in the crash location. And the biggest reason, so when I reached out to David originally, he was doing the dream mat thing. And I was like, I need, there's a problem with high bankers where the water discharges from the hopper into the sluice. They're always chaotic. It's the slurry is always a mess. So everybody needs these big, long slick plates. They need a lot of work to to dampen that that slurry down before it yeah. hits the yeah. primary recovery because you know this idea of laminar flow and all this does not occur at the top of the box it takes time to to work its way out plus if you look at the width of a sluice box and you look at the way the water flows across it there's a bunch of characteristics that are really really bad at the top of the box so i was looking for a solution for that and i was working on a bunch of different ideas and David had an idea that I really liked, and it was ultimately the one that I ended up uh, building the most of and manipulating that idea a little bit. And it's it's really just a waffle tray. And what it allows, if I can do this properly here, if you've got the bottom of your box sort of like that, and if this was to be the back of your sluice box and your water was crashing down from however big the opening from your hopper right. is, the right. water right. and the slurry need to be able to calm down before they exit across your primary recovery. So what this allows you to do is it allows a lot of material to build up underneath of these riffles really quickly when the slurry is really rich. So when you first throw your sandy shovel full in, and all that material falls out, instead of it just saturating your primary recovery, this will load up with a bunch of material and then it will milk out very quickly. Because it's perforated all the way through, it's very fluid. So with this design, this is a quarter inch and not necessarily the one I would put in a high banker, but it would be very fluid. So the material that builds up under it leaves almost as quickly. So if you're shoveling, it gives you that break in between each shovel full from rich lean, rich lean, rich lean. Right. Rich right. Lean. And really that's that's the biggest benefit is it creates this breaking effect of your slurry so that you can blow off all of the light material across your primary recovery before all the heavies hit it. And that what that does in turn is it makes most of your heavy material recovered further towards the top of the box instead of seeing more material recovered a third of the way down the box so it's ultimately it's a just a nice way to start your transition into your long part of your box pardon me in uh, that's absolutely yeah. awesome uh we miners rule says i have one of your riffles in my hog eater banker i got it second hand and i love it uh, it, we have. We, I we think have he has a dredge box too, right? If I remember correctly, I believe so. I believe so, so. In a dredge box, it's a little bit different because the way you're, if you have a horn style that exits into the back of your box, they tend to be about, I don't know, an inch and a half, or there's always a drop. It seems to the recovery. I'm not sure why they don't. The way they're situated, I don't know why it seems that they're high. So what we've had a lot of guys do is put this right at the top where the horn exits. And it's actually better if you have, this is not going to be quite right, but if you have this style where you leave the horn flat and then you drop across the riffles versus coming out of the horn and rising up because the amount of energy you're losing it can it can cause some rock backup problems, which is some of the problems that I've seen with some guys. So if you flip it over, you'll decrease the amount of energy lost by the riffle. Um, so, so it's 
in the dredge, it can be handy to be suspended where your, say your punch plate or your screen was originally. This could just drop in its place and it'll allow for a lot more heavier material to fall out sooner. That's freaking uh, awesome. Yeah. That's good stuff right there. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely good stuff. Um, so as far as the Jarby Riffle, has some of your customers sent in any photos of the uh, of nuggets dropping in those bad boys? Uh, anything like that? Have you got any photos in in, in, in in the dredge application? It definitely acts as a nugget trap that has been yeah. seen time and time again. Um, especially so if you had a quarter inch perf, for example. Um, Anything bigger than quarter obviously isn't going to fall through that. So I've, right. I've had a few pictures of nuggets bigger than quarter inch perf. Um, and awesome. in some of the bigger dredges, like uh, the four inch dredges that are 16 inch wide boxes, I'm making these out of steel instead of aluminum. So they have a much higher life to them. Uh, the aluminum is nice and light, but it wears quite quite a bit quicker. Dredges yeah. are not yeah. the nicest environments in the world. so. I do have the steel version for those. And yes, you'll get your nuggets. We'll collect in these. Your fine gold will drop out underneath. You can suspend it over moss, over any of your recovery. A lot of guys are moving into the dream mat dredge thing, which I'm sure everybody is talking about. Um, so the problem that I see with dredge boxes and the dream mat is that if you have a 48 inch box and you get a 48 inch mat, it leaves you nothing at the top of the box. So when you're running something like this, the recovery below it, instead of being really active, becomes much more of a passive recovery. So it's it would be nice if they made a 36 so you could have that transition at the top. But um, I think if you're not willing to push your mat out a little bit, you're gonna you're gonna lose the top effect of your of your dream mat in that case, and it's gonna fill with things that it most it wouldn't necessarily fill up with um, where if it could be pushed down a little bit and just be like I showed you before where it's nice and tight or it's a screen section over and it's just allowing the flow through the bottom as well as mm -hmm. the top. I think you'll see your recovery do much better without the buildup of material that some of the people complain about. That makes right. sense. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We have some comments I'd like to get through here. Sure. Um, so, well, let's go ahead and start with some of the YouTube ones. Uh, let's see here. We have Alaska Gold Hunter from YouTube in the building. Good to see you. He says, he says well, the Canadian bender. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Uh, let's see here. Dream Matt. Uh, Dave or Tim's in the building. He says, um... Since Paul actually did all the work proving the designs, it is, yes, called the Jarveen Riffle. Absolutely awesome. Um, we have a few more comments here. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Do you make one for the A52S? So that's an interesting thing I get asked a lot. Do I make something specific for someone else's product? The answer is no. Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me just a drop-off cliffhanger. What I will do for anyone at any time, I make standard sizes that fit the boxes that I sell, the boxes that I manufacture and promote. That's the size of riffles that I stock and have in stock, plus a few specialty sizes that I know sell to people. If you have a box that is unusual or has specific requirements, all you got to do is shoot me a message. I will be happy to custom build you. I custom build them for people all the time. Um, I've got a ton of different riffle designs for different applications. So if you're in a small high bank or if you're in a big dredge, we can make a bunch of changes that will optimize your situation. So you don't necessarily have to buy an off-the-shelf one, um, and you yes. can have one that is built to your yeah. With that being yeah. said, the off-the-shelf ones that I sell that are for my product are very easily trimmable, so you can cut them down any way you need to if size is an issue, if you have an off-size box. I'm not going to start making 
weird sized things to fit the one box. So you have to get a custom one trim. So that that's was how, going. That's how I'll go bring that too. Yeah, if you guys it. haven't, uh, if you haven't purchased from Paul or haven't experienced his equipment, um, you know, reach out and talk to him. If there's anybody out there that is willing to talk about boxes and gold recovery, Paul do it all day long, and he'll help you whatever idea you have. He might be able to help you bring it to fruition or give you some ups and downs on why it'll work or why it won't work. And then, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great guy to work with. Dreams. Bring me your dreams. I'll crush them. I love that. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's <laughs> easy guy to talk to and chat with. So it's, yeah, it's reach always, out. It's super great to have people bounce different ideas because people come from all different walks of life. And sometimes you'll deal with a guy that works in, petroleum engineering and he has this idea in his head and then you'll you know you'll deal with a guy that's a sheet metal worker and he has this idea in his head and it's super fun for me to bring those people to i love the diy guy like let's go all get together and have a powwow and and discuss how we're going to do things it's super fun we'll have a party um because they have these ideas that just are always such a stretch from what's going on and it's really fun right to bring it together and I like to support those guys. So if you need something built or you have an idea, I am definitely willing to build it for you. I always take on custom builds this time of year, spring, before the before the big rush, because I do all my production building in the fall. I build all my equipment at the end of the season. So come spring, I have everything ready to sell. And now I can focus on my custom builds. Like I'm building, I got, eight conveyors in the in the uh, process of being built yeah i was gonna say that that's uh the next couple of questions i wanted to um ask um first and foremost alan says i have a keen two inch and i'm not happy with the punch plate um reach out reach out try to get something figured out for that and uh you know i'm pretty sure we can get something worked out i'm sure i mean i wouldn't doubt it one bit alan so it's it's always awesome if a guy's got a couple pictures or a small video it really helps me to see what they're going working with it. yeah um, because really when it comes to the sluice box side of things it has so much to do with the slurry in the water so a lot of times from a quick video we can we can do some diagnosing from that and uh, if you've got some after shutdown pictures, those are always good too. It's always interesting to see what's left in the box when you do do your shutdown. So, yeah, anybody that wants to reach out about box stuff, I'm I built a couple. Yeah. So yeah. my my next question is um, for those that do need something custom made, whether it be this, that, or the other, um, how do you go about pricing something like that? What what is your ideology for? Um, a custom project because I think a lot of folks, I think a lot of folks, they hear the, you know, the, oh, well, I can custom make something for you. And, you know, they really don't get to understand the amount of time, the amount of effort that this, that, and the other involved. So for the folks that are watching that are maybe planning on doing a purchase um, to ease their minds a little bit, um, how do you kind of calculate things like that? If someone were to come to you and say, hey, I need this or I need that. How, how would you take that? Um, it, it's always funny because when it comes to doing custom builds, it's almost always me that loses. Almost always. <laughs> almost <Right>. every time. <laughs> All um, right. I almost always invest too much time. Um, I, I overthink things. I will redo things. I will pick things apart um, because for me, it's, the idea of doing something custom is do is an opportunity for me to do something outside of what I normally do. So if I'm just doing the same thing, it's not really custom, right? So usually if you get a custom build from me, you actually get something custom where it is right. uh, something in the build is different from the standard. And then of course, whatever meets the needs of the customer and how pricing goes is really I, I just do my best to estimate what I think the time will be to do it. And that is based on a normal build, 
not on the amount of time that I will waste going crazy trying to make it flawless and the best it can be really cool, right? I I like to do a bunch of extra little things to make things better than they have to be. And sometimes I'll have people come to my shop and they'll be like, you know, they're just gonna throw rocks at it. <laughs> and I'll be like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, they are, but but it should look nice, right? Like, I think I should TIG weld these, or I should think I should do this. And it's just, you'll almost always get more um, than you paid for. And that's that's on me. That's just the kind of person I am. I love custom building. And it's why I only take on a certain amount of custom builds, because I almost always lose. And I drive myself crazy building them. But they're super fun. Did you guys, like, the conveyors I built are ridiculous. My trommel is is insane. Um, it's just super so, fun. Right? Just just to give everybody an idea what your where where your skill set derives from. What's your background? <laughs> well, well um, backyard mechanic. Did I guess it? No, I'm just no, no, no. I had a I had a swell upbringing by some wonderful parents. No, went to high school. Uh, basically, Hi, what is, uh, I'm all, I've always been a the kind of guy that works with his hands that I was left to create, you know, I had forts as kids and go-karts and, and we made everything from wood or nails or whatever I could get my hands on. And uh, when I eventually became a young man and got a job, I got, uh, I was into custom fabrication of car audio, which was pretty labor intensive and um, incredibly creative I, I i had a a luxury of being with uh, a couple of people that were absolutely insane at the time like we were building stuff you would see at sema but we were doing this in like the early 90s um so it was really cool and we got to be super creative and then when i left the car audio scene like most young men i, I had a family and i needed more income um so where I live, oil and gas is really big. So I got in at a manufacturing uh, company that builds oil and gas moving equipment, heavy moving equipment. And I became the finishing foreman. And from that, I learned a pile about heavy fabrication, um, which was an interesting twist on the custom fabrication I'd been doing before because they come from two different backgrounds. And to be able to take those two backgrounds and bring them together allowed me to make something amazingly strong, cosmetically beautiful. And like when I hit the gate in 19 or in uh, 2017, people were just blown away at the stuff I was making in my garage. Like they're just, they hadn't seen it, right? The closest manufacturer that was doing that many bends in a box and that much detail was maybe keen and, it's funny, Don, 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 Don says, pimp my ride before it existed, blowing hair subwoofers. <laughs> Basically, right? Like, just because when I came on the scene, I looked at everything that was available in my local community, um, and which is pretty narrow in the gold mining industry. And when you step back almost 10 years ago, like, it was a real small community compared to what it is now. Um, the prices of equipment was way too high. The quality of the equipment was nowhere near the match of the cost. And I was like, I could just, I could go to work and have the guy at the office draw this on a CAD computer, send it over to another shop and have it 3D printed, bent and ship that. And I can get that for $500. And it's not that I ever went that route, but it was like, if these guys are charging $1,000 for a sluice box that I can have built for $500, why would I pay a thousand dollars? And right. plus, what I made is my own design. It's not the one they came up with. So when I, what ended up happening was I just basically looked at what everybody was doing, was unhappy with what was available, took the greatest ideas that I thought were were out there at the time. Like I love rolled box edges. Every box I make has a rolled edge. Um, I like lots of bends in my box. I like lots of structure. And I took that from some of the top manufacturers out there. And then what I did is I just combined everybody's ideas that I thought were the best. And that's what created my product. 
And then that's what I live by today. So in the custom world, I'm using as much as I'm absorbing from everybody, as well as my experience to build what I consider to be the, right. the best choice of prospecting equipment. And I hope other people agree with that. <laughs> so I definitely do. Um, I, I saw somebody asked in the comments and I'm sure a lot of people are wondering and I'm sure you've been asked a thousand times, sure. are you ever going to build a dredge from scratch? So, here's the honest problem with the dredge. Uh, I have a nice big break. I could, I would love to build some six foot boxes because I think you guys are these 48 inch boxes that are out there are like thing of the past. Everybody wants to run a dream mat. It's so a 48 inches long. You need the extra 10 inches at the top plus blah, blah, blah. So it's like, you need 60 inch boxes, 60, 70 inch boxes. And I would love to bring some boxes to the market, but where I live, dredging is not legal. So it makes right. it really challenging for me to go out and prove stuff in the field. Gotcha. Right. You can't test really. Right. So then I have to rely on third party. And uh, trust me, you're going to get 15. Yeah, I'll test for it. Yeah, there's going to be 100 people that will be like, I'll take that. Right? You know, and I'm okay with that. And it's the same with the conveyors that I've been building. I tell people, you know, I don't think they're quite ready. Um, but if you want to take one and if it has problems, I'll, I'll stand behind it and we can work together. But I'm not quite ready to do that. So the dredge thing is the same way. I'd be taking a bunch of gambles. I'd rely on a bunch of feedback. And uh, as much as I love my customers, sometimes your feedback is a little bit biased because you're, you know, you're, well, it all it all depends you're with your brand. And it, it all depends at the end of the day. I mean, there's people that love have, story. It, it's it's it just like story. it's just like it's sports. It's just like sports, man. It's the same exact concept, right? Um, and at the end of the day, people wholeheartedly support this or support that. Um, I think as a builder, you being able to adjust to a community like that and, and work with people regardless of who they root for and who they don't root for is what we need to strive for more and more, especially as the community grows the way it has in the last 10, 15 years. Well, I think I think the idea of results rule is a solid philosophy to go off of. And I think the whole community as a whole has learned a lot. Um, it has certainly gotten a lot bigger, but we've we've been a good community of sharing information. So it seems like a lot more people are on the same idea of thinking of what it takes to recover certain precious metals whereas yeah, yeah. like five years ago people were just arguing non-stop in every chat form about the way to do it right it seems like we've we've created yeah, yeah. some common ways of doing things that are really effective yeah and uh, that comes from like i said before I, our motto of like together we learn it comes from everybody's input this is what i did this is my results what did you do and and no. it's that combination that it's not the box, it's not the mat, it's not the shovel, it's not the pump. It's the combination of all of them together working in a synchronized harmony. And yeah. when yeah. things work together well, your results are really good. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what it is at the end of the day. There's no if ands, buts about it. I mean... What works for you works for you. And like you just said, uh, the second it's synchronized, you stick with that. And it works really, really well. I mean, I have people from all across the community that swear up and down on what they're specifically using is working amazing. Sure. You know, so at the end of the day, it, dude, you couldn't have said it better as uh, the second that it, that that whole bundle is synchronized and it's working for you. And in and in, in, in an efficient it. manner, that's all that matters. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. So, um, so yeah, I'd like to go on a five minute break. I have a little bit harder questions for you. Uh, I didn't go. I didn't go over them in our uh, half hour. Pre -show. Yeah, my no, there's right, nothing I got negative. <laughs> nothing negative. It's good. It's good stuff. It's fun. Uh, it's invigorating. It, it'll get your heart pounding in a good way. Um, but yeah, I have some really, really good questions. 
Um, and it mainly deals with uh, some of the equipment that you've built, um, some of the projects that you're working on, uh, some of the projects that you could possibly be working on. Um, so make sure everybody that's watching, stick around. Uh, we have a really awesome second half of the podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and I'd really like to dive a little bit deeper um, into the products that you are working on. Some of the products that we've seen on Facebook, you know, across social media sure. um, and things like that. So uh, with that being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the five minute break. So make sure you go and hit the bathroom, grab yourself a beer, grab yourself a soda. I don't care what it is. Uh, with that being said, come on back in five minutes and let's have some more freaking fun. See you guys in five. Boom. Boom.
What's going on, PB family? Welcome back to the second half of the podcast with co-host Errol Bremer, myself, and special guest, Mr. Paul Jarvis. Uh, welcome back, guys. So, um, first and foremost, before we jump into the fun stuff, um, I do want to thank all of the individuals that donated to the PB family. Um, it help keep, helps keep the lights on as far as uh, StreamYard, uh, the monthly payment for that, um, the website that is going to be back up and running here very shortly, um, and then, of course, all the other stuff. So um, I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, we ended up raising, I think, a total of, uh, and don't quote me on this, right around 560 bucks for the last uh, donation round, and it was absolutely amazing. Um, you guys are what keeps PB family, PB family as a whole. So I appreciate every single one of you guys that donated. Um, so without further ado, let's jump back into the good stuff. Um, so one of the first messenger messenger, hold on. So one of the first big questions I wanted to ask was, uh, the conveyor belt. Um, I think a lot of individuals saw, um, I think a prototype in the very, very beginning that you were messing with trying to figure out, you know, the speed, this, that, and the other, um, what made you essentially start working on something as big of a project as that? Um, because I'm just a big kid and I like toys. <laughs> <laughs> That's really all that came down to, um, my buddy owned this company called Alberta Gold Equipment before I got into this and uh, he was building trommels and stuff. And I said, it would be so cool to have a, a mini conveyor. And we worked together on a mini conveyor. This was, I don't know, almost 10 years ago. And we built a couple small ones and they had a bunch of problems, and, but they were just, they were just so cool, man. They were so rad. So uh, I built myself a four foot one that I have got like five seasons on. This thing has been just be it sits outside in the winter in the <laughs> snow. It's, I've never tracked it. It rubs against the rail. Like literally I've just been working it, hoping it burns out so I can take it apart and see what its failure is. But uh, after five seasons, it's still kicking. Um, That's awesome, man. So I, I basically, I got a bigger break. I think we talked about that maybe last time I was on, but I yeah. got a 72 inch break now. So I'm able to make a substantially bigger unit in one piece. So I was like, that's, I'm going to do it. And my whole thought in my head was I could make this thing out of steel. I could make it all structural. I could do all these triangles. I could do what's been done a thousand times, or I can see if I can form it out of sluice box aluminum like 0 0.080 and make something that's structurally strong enough that it can be used and light enough that you can move it around and that's basically what i did I basically that's that's all there is to it i uh it's you know it's got bearings and rollers and it's like a traditional conveyor it's got four points of adjustment for tracking and um i did some overlapping work to help so material couldn't fall off the track and get trapped inside of it. Just a bunch of little things that I would do for my for uh, yourself. Unit, yeah. You, yeah. What I would want. So I basically just made what I would want in a bigger unit. And I sent three out last year and all three of them had successful seasons with positive feedback. Pardon me. Uh, so that was really cool. And then I had a goal to make 10 uh, at the beginning of the year here and I cut all the material to make 10 and I'm not going to lie. Uh, I destroyed three of them forming them. I made mistakes <laughs> in my measurements and uh, uh, I ruined some material. So I got to high five myself. Um, so I ended up with, with eight vi or seven viable uh, conveyor frames because I had made some calculation errors on the first one. Um, they're they're really good. I'm really happy with them. They're all really good. They seem to be running well, but I'm just not ready to let them go out there. I'd like to prove them a little bit myself and, and see them get some hours on them without failure. I hate to make something and sell it to people and then it be a problem. Right? I don't want to be that guy. So I want to make sure when I sell it that you can use it for 
hours and hours and hours with it without it being a problem and that it has parts that are wear mm -hmm. items so that when it gets to service life intervals you can actually fix it that you're not stuck with you know some custom unit that some guy made that it, you might as well throw in the garbage and right the market and the people i've talked to that's what's out there is you buy something and it's maybe okay that's my next question so when you first started selling uh high bankers specifically um did you get any feedback on some of them failing in some which way shape or form or fashion well what i've always been a big fan of is consumer feedback so i i'm i'm i have this gift of being able to listen to anyone talk for as long as they're willing to talk um so i have heard a lot of stories from a lot of people and what i what i basically did was take the information that feedback and i i, I made small changes uh, sometimes the feedback i got wasn't warranted of changes but when you hear the same thing enough times, for example, then you start to look at it as maybe there's a problem or maybe something could be better. One of the things I was, when I first started, I was building race cars. So these things were like precision fit. Well, when you get sand and rocks and stuff and things that are precision fit, you can't take them apart and you can't put them together. So I learned a lot about tolerance and how much tolerance you had to allow and how much material like the pieces you made they have to be able to flex a certain amount before they break because if you have to put a bar in it to pry it out you have to do that this is prospecting um so i just from seeing pictures and getting feedback uh, i made a lot of changes but honestly the gear that i first started making was was pretty much what I build now. It hasn't changed a lot other than I got a welder. I learned to TIG weld. I, I refined a lot of things, but the overall design is pretty much the same. I had some pretty, pretty cool spray bars though, back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, so I have a couple more questions, but uh, Arrow, you said you had two questions. Uh, yeah. I I've got three. I probably got more than that, but we'll do it. We'll begin. I'll answer them uh, short. So you can get them all in. All right. So, <laughs> what's Say your favorite piece? If, if, if there's a piece of equipment that you have built that is your favorite, what whether it be the high banker, uh, the giant, yep. Yeah, which leads into my next question: What's going on with Goliath these days? Um, yeah. Two favorite pieces that I built, um, my two absolute favorites, the sluice pan that didn't really catch on. I absolutely loved the sluice pan. It worked so good. It was so easy to use. I could take it anywhere. I took it out all the time with my kids because I couldn't set up a high banker. I never had the time, but I always had the time to throw 10 or 15 shovelfuls in the sluice pan. So my sluice pan is probably one of my absolute favorite uh, pieces that I've made. I still have two in stock if anybody wants one, just to say, but otherwise I probably won't make them anymore because they weren't overly popular. And then uh, my number two favorite piece of equipment that I've made is probably my trauma because that thing is ridiculous. Do you have a cool. sluice pan on hand to be able to show? Um, I would have to... No, I don't. I could probably pull one up on my phone to show. Otherwise, if you, I'll, I'll put one up on my Adventures in Gold Prospecting page for anybody that's interested in looking. I can, I'll put a picture up when I get off here. Yeah, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and put the website at the bottom while we continue with the podcast. That way you guys can check out all the cool products that he has going on, custom builds, things like that. What's that, Paul? Interestingly enough, I did not list the two slips sluice pans i have on the website i maybe i will maybe tisk tisk man what are you doing they were super cool they had roller bearing handles and stuff they just were oh they, they were done but sounds anyways. like you need to get them up on there so with What's that your... being said the website's right down there folks go ahead and copy and paste onto the web browser i'm telling you the his website's pretty damn cool uh, it is through Shopify, so all the stuff is in easy categories. 
Um, it's a pretty straightforward website. I absolutely love it myself, how you have everything displayed, super simple, super easy. Um, what was the uh, what was the other question that you had, Arrow, before I jump into yeah. a few of my questions? How, how's Goliath doing? Is Goliath still going? Uh, so Goliath was a custom build. Uh, yeah, um, obviously. <laughs> but Goliath was a custom build, one of two. So there's actually two Goliaths out there. Um, <laughs> I probably would not be, build, won't be building another one anytime soon. It was a massive sluice box. Um, but the guys that have them absolutely love them. Um, it's hard not to like a unit that big. It's pretty darn big, though. That thing was yeah. Do you, uh, you still have the video of the little backhoe feeding it? Uh, that, was a diff that one was slightly smaller than Goliath, the one that the oh. backhoe is feeding. Oh, that really? Beast Eater model, which is a 12 to 16, where Goliath was a uh, 16, 24, 30. Yeah, well, you should post those videos again because, man, those yeah. are cool. Yeah. I do have a custom build that I'm doing right now. I, I dubbed it uh, the Yukon build. It's going to the Yukon. Uh, one of my clients uh, has a job in the Yukon working on a claim, and the people he works for are so awesome that they're allowed to sluice in their off hours, like as a recreational type that's awesome. So I'm building him a custom little unit that's going to be fed by like one of those little Kubota type backhoe things. So it's a it's cool. a neat build for me. It's a little bit more heavy duty than I get into. It's got dual grizzlies and I'll have dual spray bars. And we got a question for you here. Yes, sir. It's right there. What's expected price on the sluice pan? Um, I think if I remember correctly, I think I had them at 140 bucks Canadian. So uh, about buck 20 American. Absolutely awesome. You need to get those bad boys on the website ASAP. <laughs> I, will, I will put them up. I'll get them on there. Like I said, I think I have two or three of them in the shed and they, they were pretty cool. There's a couple of videos on, on my page of me using them, even the concept idea where I started with my actual like six inch river sluice and uh, I could, it didn't work in the river. It was completely useless. So I'm like, what am I going to do with this thing? And I was like, <laughs> I could almost do this if it was a little bit different. And like I made ergonomic handles and the roller bearing handles, there's no fatigue. You can do this like for hours on end and you don't get tired. So. It was a good awesome. idea, and I sold probably thirty or forty of them. But I just, I didn't. Again, I didn't have a website or any way of marketing them. So, right, it is, right. No, that's absolutely that awesome. Um, another question that I wanted to ask, which is kind of a hotter question: um, How do you feel coming uh, up in the next few years, um, <clears throat> branching out? Um, selling your products at uh, gold shows here in the states, um, you know what 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 is swirling around in in Paul's head as far as branching out to gold shows and really trying to market your product as far as uh, that goes. If you want the honest truth, yeah, the honest about it. truth is that I have a fourteen year old daughter and two 12-year-old twin boys, and they are my number one focus. Um, I will not expand the business into a situation where I can't care for my family first. And by that, I mean go to karate tournaments, go drop off kids, pick like a softball, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I get it. I, I actually got asked by a friend the other day, like, how many hours a day do you actually work? Do you work eight hours a day? And, and it was funny because I, I don't stop working. I'm always doing something. So it was kind of humorous to hear that from someone because I'm so involved with my family all the time. So they're the driving factor of my life. My, my business is too. Um, so as far as expansion goes, what I'm really hoping is going to happen is that my website is going to take care of the sales and i'm going to get to keep doing what i love doing and that's the fabrication the building part and and putting the product out uh, being able to tell people about it and then minimizing my time doing the sales part that has been such a big occupier and has slowed my my growth talking like i love talking to people but 
I'll talk forever, right? So if I hey, do, we love it. Know, That's why we do this. I'll That's why we do the podcast. Right? Yeah. We love it, man. We want to hear every damn word you got, buddy. <laughs> so it, it, it's interesting having the website for a short period of time. I've noticed that people like to buy product when they should be sleeping. So you guys should sleep and then buy your product during the day. Don't, don't buy it in the middle of the night. All That's of cool. our t-shirts and sweatshirts come in right around 10, 11, midnight. Like, and what are I, you doing? I'm and in the bed. Next, and the next morning, <laughs> and the next morning, I get up to go out and like have a full adventurous day to myself because my wife's doing her okay. nails or whatever. Right. And then I get up or, you know, at the, at the time the website's down right now. And I'd get up and spend all day doing t-shirts and sweatshirts and <laughs> You know, it's just like, it's midnight. What's going on here? So I think that's what my website did for me, right? Is it got me to the audience that I wasn't able to cater to before. I still take messenger messages through Facebook. I still do the Facebook sales and stuff where people can, you know, reach out, be in contact. Some, like a lot of times when I do builds, I, I one thing I didn't mention when I do custom builds for people, like I'll send you pictures. It's like, if you were getting a car built, I would send you Updates. 20 pictures yeah. a day of the yeah. of changes, right? So that you can have, you're a part of it. So as I'm building something for you, I have my artistic vision. But if if we are on different paths, we can work together and we can make changes through the build. And that, it's super fun to do that, man. It's like, that's what I live for. I totally agree. Um, you know, when, when, uh, uh, when we had the up, uh, the website up and running, uh, we had it up and running for quite some time. We had transitioned over. Um, I had built page by page by myself, all my own coding, um, and it was working absolutely phenomenal. And the funny thing was, is the most satisfaction I got out of the blisters, out of the time spent pressing and, and you know, going over every single thing, the perfect size, the sizing, like everything, my most favorite out of all of it was seeing some of the PB family at group digs rocking yeah. gear, yeah, kicking man. ass and taking names to me that That's like, true. you know what I mean? That is just the <laughs> best feeling in the world because they're so proud of it and it makes you so proud of who you are and what you've built. You know, it just, it, it, it's, it's such an invigorating feeling, um, you know, being able to spread that freaking positivity. It's just an, it's an awesome feeling, man. So I totally, totally get it 110 um, percent that is the reason for doing it is to see that joy man it's a like any any niche industry i've worked in in the past i've always been about the community of that niche industry and this one has has grown really well in a positive way and it's super great to see people doing really well and being proud of it like yeah i like seeing pans with five flakes in it just as much as i like seeing pans with five (laughs) same dude 100 percent uh you know i've talked to some folks that are like yeah we only got a couple colors but i tell you what we had a hell of a weekend the guy with five flakes is probably happier than the guy with five grams (laughs) like prospecting is a skill set and it doesn't come easy and you got to work at it and yeah. if you want to be the best at it, you're going to have to dedicate a lot to it. So yeah. some guys only get out for a little bit and they're happy with what they get. And for those, I, some of those people are my best customers. Yeah. You know? Yep. 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 And they're always happy. So I love that. They're great stories, right? No, that's absolutely phenomenal. So um, I have a few more questions. So now that we talked about, um the subject earlier with uh the belt driven and things like that um so i wanted to ask so aside from that um the products you have on your website um do you what how should i word this what are your plans in the future as far as um further helping the community understand how to use your products instructions sure. you know how you know because you know a lot of folks know they can reach out to you and things like that but is there any kind of development that you could possibly say in the near future to allow folks to kind of have a better understanding of your products how they work and things like that absolutely 
a couple things I'll touch on. What, what because again, I'm I'm a single person with a very small network of of people working and a very limited amount of time. Um, I haven't got there. So I don't, when you get a high banker from me, it doesn't come with an instruction pamphlet. It just comes fully assembled. Um, but what I will be doing is building a network of videos that correspond with the products that are being marketed, the ones that are on the website. Um, I'm not going to focus on the stuff that's not on the website. The Yeah, 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 of course. The past, right? We'll focus on the things that are relevant and every one of those products will have links to a video that shows you what I consider, you know, set up and run and to right. try to do a, a tutorial to walk you through. Um, most of the high bankers, like all, most of them, all of the high bankers follow the same manufacturing footprint. So I can basically pick one and it covers them all. So right. I'll make a generic right. one on, you know, how to install legs and stuff like that which I don't have currently, but that is coming. And hopefully we will do that this summer if, uh, if we don't get kicked out of the back country because of wildfires. Right. So, uh, uh, if, if that works out, I have a cargo trailer planned to take all my gear out and we'll do videos of all the different product with live, uh, applic not live, but real application. Right. Well, and I, and I think that's super crucial. Um, and I'm going to be hundred percent honest here. Um, I think it's super crucial. Um, like we were talking about the last 10, 15 years, how the community has shifted in such a positive note, but on the flip side of that positive note, you have so many more individuals jumping in. So head first, um, and do they don't really get the proper help that they absolutely need when they first dive in. And I'm not going to sit here and say that that's ever going to change. You know, it's, it's repetitive newbie questions, right? You know, it's never going to change. It's always going to be there. But as we evolve as, you know, human beings in this community, I feel like, you know, all the folks that are building top quality products really need to, have that extra step up for the newbies that are coming into the community, really trying to make this community even bigger than it's ever been. I feel like that's kind of like a duty. Um, you know, you build a, an amazing product. Um, I feel like there needs to be help behind that product. You know, that's, that's a huge thing because a lot of the products um, that have came out over the years, it's, it's, you buy the, you know, as a newbie, you buy the product that comes to you. You don't know how to use it. You feel like it has failed you. And yeah. then you go out and try to buy another product. And so you're spending thousands of dollars when I feel like if if you truly believe in the product that you build, you should be able to help every single person that buys your product. So that way they have the best possible chance when they go and take the, that vacation time, they have the best possible chance every time they go out and enjoy themselves. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to to make those instructional videos for the product. I think we're always going to run into the same um, questions that are asked from new individuals. Like if you uh, oh, yeah. a, a spreadsheet for just starting out guys that you could just post when a, when a guy goes, I'm a newbie. And that would literally give them two years of advance notice off of one spreadsheet because all those points could be put there. But the problem is, is a person can read a thousand books until you put it to practice, until you actually see what's happening in a box. We spoke really about that. really hard to understand what's going on in that physics book. You can do all the mathematical equations. Then you come out to the real world and I'll tell you what happens. Your slurry isn't a mathematical equation. It changes because you just had a four inch boulder. It changes because it's clay. It changes because it's high organic. Oh, your pump just sucked up a fish, you know? <laughs> you're always gonna yeah, you're always you're always gonna have problems. I think, I think uh, having giving, basic tutorials on how yeah. to use gear and to guide people in the right direction yeah. is the best. Um, but ultimately it's gonna come down to that person being willing to put the time in it and and like I said it today, the the key to success is the willingness to fail. Um, if you aren't willing to go out and have some bad days at the river, you're probably never going to have a good day because yeah. prospecting is not easy. If it was easy, 
then everyone would have all the gold and no one would do it. You know what I mean? So you are taking on a challenging sport to begin with. So you do have to put a little bit on yourself and be willing to get your hands dirty. And as much as we all love the internet for its instant gratification, the internet is not going to put a shovel in the ground, do your Yeah, it's like it. it's just like any product, you know. Uh unfortunately to say, um you gotta product, do it. Yeah, you have to have that physical, uh, the physical work to it to really truly understand how something works. You can't just watch a video and think you're a professional at using it. It's not. It does not work like that. A good question for you: Who's the guys on Facebook that are killing it? (laughs) Don't put me on that. Don't put me on that. We don't even have to say names. But if we all just spot this guy, five five prospectors (laughs) that we follow. You, everybody that's in the community yeah. already has somebody that they're looking up to, you know, like there's guys that have these crazy adventures, these guys that have totally great, agree. You know, the yeah. So you're following somebody already. And if you want to learn, you look to the best person in what you want to do and you follow right. that person and you will get better. That's yeah. Right? I totally that's agree with philosophy. that. I'd have to totally agree with that. I think we all have individuals that we love to watch. Um, <clears throat> the biggest thing for me uh, personally um, is I've tested a lot of different equipment. I've been around people that has had equipment that I didn't own, yep. but I've saw the results. And for me, um, that's how you learn is by physically being there, physically using something and getting a full understanding. And if Absolutely. that's something that doesn't work for you, then that's when you make that decision, hey, I'm going to try a different piece of equipment. I, and, and I, it, it, well, and really, the, the equipment is secondary. It, because, yeah, yeah we always you got to learn yeah. how to run it, yeah. but you got to learn how to find it, too. And because yeah. it don't matter how. Number one, first, you have to prospect. The equipment doesn't matter if you can't use the pan. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, um, but. I think you're, I think you're right. Like it's, it's nice to be able to look like if, if I was going to go work on my car, likely I would go look at a YouTube video for some type of feedback before I went and did that procedure. So definitely it's nice if this high banker right behind me had a tutorial on what type, what the flow rate should look like, things like that so that a person can reference it. And that is the type of information that I will bring forward in my videos Versus me being like, oh, my recovery is the best in the world or my box washes, you know, like it doesn't matter. It, we're just going to talk about what it's capable of. And and then you, when you yeah. put it yeah. in the field, will prove that it's good or it's not for your application, even though that mine are pretty much. Bad of the bone, yeah. even though, yeah, yeah. quote unquote. <laughs> even though, yeah, no, it's just. You, you got to learn it. So, yeah, I think having a baseline is important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we got a comment here. Uh, Alaska Gold Hunter. We all know who this guy is. Absolute badass. Um, super amazing dude. Um, if you guys don't know who he is, I feel sorry for you. Dude's, <laughs> dude is absolutely badass. Uh, he says, I'm here if anybody needs to look up to someone. And to be honest, that's a good idea. Go check out, go, I'm telling you, can anybody, okay, so without me saying his name, can anybody drop his name in the comments? Let's see who gets it first. Let's see who gets it first. Sergio, yeah. So another person I wanted to bring up, um, she posts a ton of videos, um, and she is a absolute badass. We've had her on the podcast. We've given away one of her pater bags for a Christmas special giveaway. It was like two years ago. Um, uh, Yukon Alley, an amazing individual up in the Yukon, her and her husband, amazing individuals down to earth. Uh, if that's something that you'd be interested in, someone that you'd want to follow, Yukon Alley, absolutely amazing um just a ton of fun to watch let's see if someone let's <laughs> Pioneer Brad Marley. Marley. Brad no, it's... Wanted... what's that arrow i was gonna say brad martinez wanted me to say what's up paul 
<laughs> what rolling up, with the punches, buddy. Rolling with the punches. <laughs> yeah. Be uh, ready to go, see. Dad. Let's see if someone named who that is. Da, 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 da. Pioneer Polly. No, Neil, it's not Pioneer Polly. It is not Pioneer Polly. No, no. Uh, Sorry, guys. Sorry to let you down. He makes some good YouTube videos, though, and he's definitely worth a good laugh. So you should check him out, Pioneer Polly. Good Canadian boy, too. Yeah, he's uh he's a tough one. He's a real tough one. Um we've had uh who did we have on? Uh we had Chris uh up there, uh Chris Bogusis. That was a ton of fun. A ton of fun. You remember that interview, Arrow? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was a ton of fun. That was a ton of fun. But anyways, back to the podcast. Gosh, every single time the comments, man, they always just Okay. Go off to a whole different subject. But anyways, um, so back to what we were talking about. So um, instructional videos, uh, that's absolutely awesome. I think that would be a huge benefit to the folks that do purchase your equipment. I mean, honestly, in, in today's day and age, the, the folks that will be buying your equipment and have bought your equipment really already know what they're doing. Um, some might, some might not, might not, but, you know, the majority really kind of know what they're doing. But I think as a whole for growing the community and making the community so much more informative uh, and, and bigger, it's a no brainer for, for instructional videos. You know, it's, it's, it's going to make sense for the website too, for people. So they yeah. understand the difference between product because looking, I get comments all the time. A six inch high banker is not as big as I thought it was. And it's like, I don't know what people think six inches is, but uh, they should all revisit the tape measure. Once <laughs> They've been listening to their wives. <laughs> <laughs> so, having something that references, oh, yeah, it's, it's going to happen for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. So uh, the last question I wanted to ask, I know we're running on damn near two hours here. That's, that's uh, you know, if we hit that two hour mark, that is just a absolutely golden podcast. And I, I, can, I can't speak for everybody watching the podcast, but I'm pretty damn sure everybody's having a damn good time. We have 48 people in the building right now watching the podcast, and that's absolutely amazing. I love it. Good to see um, you. Man. So, but my last question of the night is going to be, and I'm going to put you on the spot here. Do you have a Jarvie Riffle to give away to one lucky person tonight? Sure. Yeah, I could definitely do that. I was thinking Ooh. maybe throw a hat in on that too. There we go. There we oh. go. We got a giveaway. We got a giveaway. Unfortunately, I'll, I'll... I'm Sorry. rusty. I'm rusty with the with the fingers. Usually, I'm pretty fast at it. So <laughs> I'm going to leave that to you guys. I'll definitely. Yeah. I I have this guy right here. Yeah, um, definitely. But I will be happy to cater to the size of the contestant. So if you have a, this is a 12 in my hand. If you have a 10 inch box, I'll hook you up with a 10. You got an eight inch box, I'll hook you up with an eight, whatever you need. No problem. We'll bango, line you up. Bango. It works for your box for sure. And, Absolutely awesome. And to make, to make it even cooler, we'll, uh, Woo, we'll look toss at that. A hat in that, that is pretty damn sweet. That's pretty damn sweet. So before we even do the giveaway, let's go ahead and get a lot of thumbs up. Thumbs up in the YouTube channel. Thumbs up on Facebook. Let's make it happen. We'll get the name real rocking and rolling. Um, and then go from there. So I'll, for even, the... I'll even jazz it up one more. Ooh. It, whoever wins this, when you message me for your shipping information, we'll talk about your box. And if I need to custom alter this for your application, I'm going to do that for you. That's absolutely guy. badass. And that's nice. why you guys shop with Paul. Do all Paul. <laughs> the website's right there. Jump on that damn website. Get your guys' gear. For the Anybody can go season. to Walmart and buy something off the shelf. But the shit that's on the shelf don't always fit the basket. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, I couldn't agree with you more, man. I'm wearing a pair of Dickies shorts right now that I bought from Walmart, and I have it unbuttoned because they don't fit. <laughs> but I'm not taking them back. So I agree with you tenfold on that, 100%. Don, do not make a joke about that. Leave it be. So, uh, <laughs> seriously. Small businesses. 
right? That's the biggest thing. You guys. That's the biggest thing. I mean, if you look at the small businesses that are thriving right now in the community, um, it it's all quality. Everybody. It's it all quality. Everybody. Goes to well, it's, everybody. It's, it's, it's all quality. I mean, Casey Lawson, he wasn't even trying to really go you know, far-fetched with what he was doing with custom builds. And the high banker that I received from him just awesome. blew me out of the water. Completely yeah, blew dude, me out of the I, water. I use his boxes every time I go out. Yeah. He's right. one of my That's, best buddies. And Very that good. is that is a small business build. Someone who took the time, you know, have has the passion for building something like that. And they, you see that at the end product every time. They care about you what you're getting. Right? Like they yeah, literally 100%. care about what you're getting. And that that is it means something. So it's it's craftsmanship and, and hand skills are such a dying thing, you know, finding a carpenter that can work with his hands or a mechanic yeah. that can actually you like these are dying things. So anybody that's still out there grinding, that's trying, whether they're the best or the worst, at least if they're doing something, their skill set can always get better. And uh, I, I just thumbs up, man. Do I gotta give, I gotta give a, I gotta give a specific shout out. Dallas Edwards, he owns his own flooring company. Dude is bad to the bone. I don't know if you guys know Dallas Edwards. He's in the PB family. His flooring is just drop dead i mean i'm telling you and that is a small business that i would support if i needed flooring in in any application whatsoever i'm telling you support small businesses i'm i, I can't stress that enough um I'll give you one last thing before i let you talk there so sometimes yeah. i'll have people that want to custom order things and get a, a special color and other people can't understand why they would want to spend that but the joy of getting something built for yourself is the value is what you're willing to put into it, not what somebody else puts on it. So if you like pink Cadillacs and are willing to get yourself, like, do it, do it. And people like me will be more than happy to cater to those needs. So it doesn't matter if somebody else can't justify why you're doing it. You know, well, on the big I box, love purple high bankers. I like gold vein, but I know that purple is the number one selling one. If I make purple yeah. ones, they always sell. So, yeah. well, and know, the thing is, is the big, want. big, big, big commercial guys, they're not going to cater to you. No, we'll just put that straight out there. I'm not going to name any names, but specifically, they will not cater to you. You well, get what you their get. Stamp. Their product is built in a specific yeah. way, and that's the only way they make it. And they only yeah. have so many options. When you're dealing with handmade things, everything can be adjusted and tweaked yeah. to fit your needs, right? So that's yeah. that's it, man. That's the whole deal. Hundred percent. Um. So for the folks, I just saw a couple here. So for the folks that doesn't know who the Alaskan Gold Hunter is, uh, it's pretty funny. It's Justin Peterson, badass individual. Um, many many years under his belt. Um, definitely look him up on YouTube. Go, go give him a follow. Um, watch his videos. You guys will absolutely have a ton of fun watching what he posts. So, uh, without further ado, I think we have a giveaway to rock and roll on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm drooling at the mouth. <laughs> that's, that's the only downfall with being the host, right? Arrow is <laughs> we get to give away some amazing stuff. And we never. Get it's to not actually. a downfall. It's fun, and you know what's even cooler it is, is uh, yeah, you know, like uh, Brad Martinez to... said, he's like, if I win the drawing, you know, give it away, move it on, you know. We, it's just great to to support the the community, the family. The community. And, That's the biggest. You thing, know, man. Ha have That's... people like Paul on. Uh, what an amazing guy! I've talked to him for a number of years now, and he's just a good guy. Yeah, if anybody hasn't seen the first episode, um, go over to Prospecting Buddy on YouTube. It's super simple to find. You, much. you didn't talk enough. <laughs> <laughs> go on YouTube, look up Prospecting Buddy. We have, I think, we're past our 50th, 50th episode now. Um, absolutely amazing people within the community. That's insane. But we, yeah, it's, I know we should have did something crazy for the 50th, but we obviously were all too busy. But the first uh, podcast we did with Paul, it was absolutely awesome. We touched on a ton of subjects, ton of knowledge. Um, the guy's been absolutely amazing, not only for the community, but for the PB family. 
Um, so yeah, so if, if that's something you guys want to do, jump over to the YouTube page, check it out. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get some names in this name wheel and go from there. So, um, I'm going to put a comment in the YouTube page and I'm going to put a comment in the Facebook page. Now, Arrow, I need your really good help to name yep. every single name so that I could do this do and go from I got, there. I got Facebook covered if you can cover YouTube. Yeah, I got YouTube right here, so we're we're yeah. good to go as far as that goes. Um, okay. So without further ado, let me go ahead and drop a comment. So um, double names is a no-go. Um, instead of me sitting here trying to sort and segregate all the freaking double names and things like that, unfortunately, if I see a double name, it's disqualified. Um, it's just a pain in my ass. We got to go through. Instead of it taking five minutes, it takes way longer than it should. So one name, that's all. Right as I put a comment in Facebook and put a comment in YouTube, put your put your name in there, and then we will get it rocking and rolling. All right. So I'm going to put start, S-T-A-R-T, capital letters, S-T-A-R-T. I'm going to put that in Facebook in Ooh, three, nice. two, just kidding. Drum rolls. <laughs> Everybody's all excited. Drum rolls. Let's get those drum rolls. Triple A rock hound. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, damn it. Look at him. Oh, man. Yeah. Let's get those drum rolls in there first. And then I'll drop that comment on both. Please and thank you. Drum rolls, please. There we go. There we go. Gold monkey. Don. Rob. Come on. No drumsticks, Don. No drumsticks. <laughs> just the drums buddy <laughs> jeez louise <laughs> this guy mucking plaster there we go chris johnson mojo hey All what's right. up mucking plaster <laughs> that's too funny oh that is hilarious all right so here we go in three two one facebook put your name underneath uh youtube put your name underneath let's go let's do it to it here we go make, make sure you guys put it underneath the start comment for the guys that put their names in, put them in again under the start. Or that's where there I'm going to start. They're they're flooding in, Arrow. Yep. All right, I'm going to start. We got Dwayne. Uh, let's see here, Dwayne. Up, Dwayne? We got Sean. We got Jody. Uh, we got Matthew. All right, can you go from there? Yeah. So you got Matthew Rudisil. Yep. Jody, uh, Ivy Neal. Okay. Dallas Edwards. Okay. Brad Martinez. Okay. Frank Higgins. Okay. Fred Messimer. Ooh, that one's a little longer. Okay. And we got Cliff Somer. I think he's uh, won one before. Okay. Let's see, did Jeremiah Framstad. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Okay. Got uh, Dan Rouse, uh, Mr. Prospector Treasure Trove down there in Beaverton, Oregon. In Oregon. Make sure if you're down there to swing by. Uh, I think he's uh, having a pros and cons dig here soon, too. So if you're interested, reach out for that. Joshua Christensen. Okay. Uh, did, I, did I say? Oh, we got, a, we, got a, we got a ton of them here. We got a ton yeah, of yeah. Yeah, Alan. I think uh Alan Barnett. Good. Hold on. That's yeah. Good. Gold Monkey. Okay. Chris Johnson. Okay. Mojo Lucas. Mojo. Okay. Bobby Freedom. What's up, Bobby? How you doing, buddy? Hey, Bobby Freedom. We were supposed to have him on the podcast. Things didn't work out. We got to get him back on. Good to see you, brother yep. man. Uh Michael Crawford. Uh, yep. Triple A Rock Allen. Okay. Mike Cali Moore. Say that one more time. Mike Cali Moore. Uh, so, so Bobby Freedom, Michael, what? And then Triple A Rock Allen? What was Michael's last name? Michael Crawford. Crawford. Got him. Okay. 
Triple A Rock Hound, and then we'll go from there. Mike Callie Moore. Mike Callie Moore. Okay. I think Jody's already in there. Chris Yu. Yep. Okay. Uh, Norm King. Okay. Richard Park. Okay. Jeremy Patrick. Okay. Jason Hompland. H O M P L A N D. H O M P O L N D. Okay. Don went. Does Don deserve a prize? Hell no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, hold on, because that means the rest of that means the rest of them. Yeah, the hell with it. We'll throw the rest of them in there. Let's do it. All right then, Sergio, and just throw in the the guys that are on here. Yep, yep. So we got Don, we got Rob, we got Sergio, we got Tina. We got uh, Steven. All right, let's keep going. Let's see. Did I get Richard Park? I think so. Yep. All right, I'm down to the end of my my list here. Okay, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Joseph Gill. Uh, let's see here. We got mm -hmm. Dallas. Did we get Dallas? We got Dallas. Norm, we got you, buddy. Uh, Park, Jason Hoplin. Yeah, we got all of the folks on the Facebook side of things. Let me just... Uh, what about you got there. Richard Couch? Richard Couch, we didn't get you. Let's get you in there. Okay. Yeah, Dallas, we got you. All right. So on the Facebook side of things, we're going to go ahead and um, name all the names. Let's go ahead and get on the YouTube side of things. Joseph Bossy, let's get you in there, buddy. Uh, Joseph Bossy. Jason AU Colorado. Okay, we got you in there, bud. Greg Stories. Uh, how do you spell the last one? Stories. Last Stories. S T O R I E S. Okay, got you in there. Uh, the Canadian Hillbilly. Let's get you in there, my dude. Canadian Hillbilly. And the names grow. Lee Skillings, got you, bud. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, let's see who else is in here. Just give me just a moment, folks. Mark Ferguson. Mark Ferguson. Got you in there, bud. Evergreen Prospectors. Man, what's up, brother? What's up, dude? Evergreen Prospectors. Man, we got to get out and start digging with these guys, man. I tell I you know, what. Right? You know how much fucking fun we'd have doing that, dude? Man. Prospect Pat. What's up, dude? Uh, oh, let's get Fernando in there. Mr. Fernando. He was Hi, actually buddy. my he was my first t-shirt purchase, and he bought a all-white t-shirt, and I was terrified that that thing would just get absolutely <laughs> destroyed. And I tell you what, he goes out in pans and he all the pictures he took on Facebook while he was wearing it, that thing looked whiter than anybody anybody's teeth I've ever seen. Just a completely <laughs> full white. I'm like, how are you prospecting, dude? Your shirt is clean. And uh, he's like, I got my ways. All right. More power to you, man. Just Don says mind. congrats on the twins and uh, also the vasectomy. <laughs> wow, Don, I take that back. <laughs> I completely take that back. Uh, Arrowhead Lee, let's get you in there. Arrowhead Lee. I have an um, Arrowhead. And then I think we have two more, and then we'll, we'll name the names, and then we'll get this thing uh, rocking and rolling. Chris Spank, got you in there, bud. Spank! That's my buddy. Yeah, Chris Spinks in the building. Yeah. Paul is so hot. Paul, you are so hot. That's what you said. Right there, <laughs> Absolutely awesome. I love it. Absolutely love that it. Anybody that's ever stood behind me my whole life, that guy's always been there. And the fact that he's watching this podcast makes it's it all. all yep, yeah, makes it all the better. All right, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and go through the names real quick. If you didn't hear your name, 
Um, go ahead and put your name in. For now, everybody stop commenting. That way I can see um, after the comment. So I'm going to put in Facebook. I'm going to say stop right this second. YouTube, I'm going to say stop. Um, so that way I can kind of go back to what I commented on and I can see what names um, I didn't name off. Um, so with that being said, uh, take a shot or whatever Don's little game was. Um, Dwayne Lovejoy, Sean Ingalls, Jody, Matthew, Ivy Neal, Dallas Edwards, Brad Martinez, Frank Higgins, Fred Messimer, Cliff Summer, Jeremiah Framstad. Uh, Dan Rouse, Joshua Christensen, Alan Barnett, Gold Monkey Prospecting, Chris Johnson, Mojo, Bobby Freedom, Michael Crawford, AAA Rockhound, Mike Callimore, Chris Yu, Norm Ching, Richard Park, Jeremiah Patrick, Jason Homplund. I probably spelled that wrong. Jason Homplund, Don Wendt, Ron McGuire, Sergio Tina Steven, Joseph Gill, Richard Couch, Joseph Bossy, Jason Colorado. Mm -hmm. Greg Stories, the Canadian Hillbilly, Lee Skillings, Mark Ferguson, Evergreen Prospectors, Prospect Pat, Fernando Q Quarez, I got that right, Mucking Placer, Miners Rule, Arrowhead Lee, Chris Spink. Now, if any of you guys didn't hear your name, put your name in ASAP because within the minute I'm going to look. And if I don't see your name in there, I'm spinning this damn wheel. All right. So you literally have one minute and go. Hompland. I am so sorry. Let me re, re uh Hompland. Okay, I apologize on your last name, my dude. Yeah, Jason, right. it's something we struggle Go with ahead. is people's names on here. It's it's kind of an ongoing joke. So you just fit right in, buddy. Right in like two peas in a pod. I tell you what. All right. So let's see here. So I'm not seeing anything on the Facebook side. So I love it. Absolutely love it. Yep. So uh let's get back up to my comment here all right sweet so it looks like i named every single person in here so we got a wheel that we have to get spun oh, all right man. you guys feel it coming here it comes <laughs> so without further ado don uh drum rolls please drum rolls drum rolls drum rolls come on we need at least five of them to knock this wheel going. Michael Padilla, I got you in there. Drum rolls, yep. drum rolls, drum rolls. <coughs> Excuse me. We, we, got, one. Uh, we got one. Michael Pessinen. Uh, Michael Pessinen. Okay, yeah, I got you in there. I still need those drum rolls. Let's see. We got one, two, three. We got three on Facebook side. Come on. We got one, two. Oh, that's all you, Rob. We need more on YouTube. Let's go. We need one more Facebook, and we need three more on YouTube. Let's make it happen, guys. Come on. Here we go. Mucking Placer, Lee Skillings, Rob. That's and three. We need two we more go. on YouTube. Ooh. We got our five on Facebook. We need two What's more up, on Andy? YouTube. Let's do How it. How you doing, buddy? Let's do it to it, fellas. Come on. There we go. Come on. Come on. Oh, uh, we on. just got a uh, Lloyd Kinath. Uh, Kinath. Yep. yep. Got him in there. Okay. All right. Facebook side, we're ready to rock and roll. We need literally right. one more person. We ain't rolling this bad boy unless we get one more drum roll from someone else on YouTube. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. There it is. Joseph Bossy. All right. So with that being said, let's do it to it. Bam! And the winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Greg Stories. Yes, Greg. Greg Stories. Congratulations, my man. Greg Stories. All right, so you have just won the package from Mr. Paul Jarvis, Adventures in Gold Prospecting. So with that being said, Don... Make sure you reach out to Paul. Paul will get you all taken care of. Um, if you have any other questions, hits, runs, errors, concerns, um, with a sluice setup that you have, banker, uh, dredge, whatever the case may be, um, reach out to him. He'll give you some knowledge. And if he doesn't have the knowledge, which he does, for whatever the case may be, this guy is an encycl encyclopedia of any questions you might have with other folks. So reach out to him. He'll get you hooked up. Awesome deal. Good stuff. 
Badass. Thank, thank you, Paul. Yeah, That's cool. Paul, thank you very, very much. Thanks um, for having me, guys. Dude, we want to have man. you. We want to. Yeah, we want to <laughs> have you on a few more times. It's always a fun time spending time with you, man. You are a down to earth individual. You truly care about the community, and we love to promote people that truly freaking care about the community. We don't like to have people on the podcast that are all about themselves. We like individuals that that just ingrain what the community is about, man. That's that's the biggest staple. That's why we created the Digging Deeper podcast is to bring individuals to light and 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 do everything we can for them, to, you know, on our part to help them succeed. You know, that's that's huge. Absolutely huge. Well, you know, like I said, I rock that family first motto in everything I do, which I bring to my business, which means when I deal with people, I treat them as good as I would my family. So it's a pleasure for me to be in the community and to share my skill set. I'm I'm I feel super grateful for the opportunity to uh, to be able to align with so many people. So gold is at an all time high, guys. Like it really yeah. is. It really oh, freaking man. is, man. Oh. It really so, is. Happy to help anybody that comes my way. I will be more than happy to help you. And you anybody guys. who feels that they got that I didn't respond, if you didn't hear back from me, just reach out again. I get really busy sometimes, but I try to reach out to everybody that contacts me. I'm, I'm super easy to deal with. Yes, you are. That's for damn sure. Anybody that wants to get a piece of equipment, jump over to that website. We are jumping off. I'm telling you, his equipment is bad to the bone. Absolutely awesome stuff. I mean, extremely durable. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, if you can't yep. throw it, it ain't worth having. Yep, yep, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed the podcast tonight. Look forward to our next podcast. We have another podcast next Thursday with a special guest. Um, we'll be announcing that probably Monday, Tuesday, if I get busy, probably Wednesday. Um, but we'll be announcing another special guest. We're going to do a doubleheader this week with amazing Paul Jarvis and another amazing guest next Thursday. So with that being said, you guys have an amazing rest of your evening. I love all of the PB family. We'll see you next time. From us to see you. Guys. Let's get some heavy pants. Have a great night. See you guys. Thanks for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. Yep.